for the joint meeting before we kick off, Steve, I think you do need to call your, your meeting order and you'll have to adjourn your meeting also. And you'll have to do separate motions um, for your for the motion. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and call the town um, select board meeting order. Um, before we jump in, are there any suggestions or additions to the agenda from the town? Should we pick a date in November for another joint meeting? Put at the end of the agenda, okay, yep. Usually that's when we would know insurance rates and everything. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so we're, uh, by the way, we're adjourned at 6.04. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I was trying to make a record, but Eric's here, so we can do that tonight. Maybe next time. <laughs> okay, Steve. So um, call the village uh, trustees to order. Prisoner Diane, Linda, BJ, myself, and Ken on Zoom. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. Um, just before we get going, there's a lot more people on the joint discussion than we typically have in our individual boards. So just a request that folks don't interrupt and that you do wait to be called on before you begin speaking. That would be really great. Um, <laughs> Jeez, Evan, do you look right now? Just so that we can keep things rolling. You got to let her finish. That's right. Okay. Steve, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, those, yeah, I need to ask the select board two things. Um, one of them is a grant that I am writing, and I need permission from you guys for Legion Field to apply for another AARP grant. The other thing is the window. We have them on our next agenda. Great. Okay. Yep. yep. That's it. Okay. Excellent. Do you have anything, Ken? Add? Uh, no. Okay, um, so the first topic is Memorandum of Understanding for the Jointly Owned Buildings. Uh, Ryan, do you wanna kick us off on this memorandum and just remind us where we left off last? So uh, early this year, uh, back in January, the last time we had a joint meeting, uh, one of the purposes of that meeting was to talk about creating an MOU uh, to help us kind of navigate responsibility for uh, especially maintenance of different shared properties. Uh, so included in your packet is the uh, proposal by the village on the page, packet page two and three. Then uh, one of the issues that uh, we had had, that the town had had about this, uh, was questions about the old mill house. So on pages four and five, uh, I have a suggested update, um, which the chief change among this, uh, besides updating the, the date itself, uh, is changed to the old mill house where that is uh, represented as a shared building that we would each have responsibility for. And I added signature so lines. Yeah. So the date, signature lines, and the change to the old mill house. <clears throat> Meaning the term. Yeah, the term. So that's the okay, fourth so section. Just to clarify, your change, your suggested changes are on pa packet page four the term cancellation and amendment section, specifically the term of the MOU, that's one change. Another change is the old mill house on page five, about a 50% responsibility share. And the last change is the signatures. Yes. Okay. Process question. Yep. Um, if, if we can come to agreement on one of these policies, my presumption is that both individual boards would need to act on this at a duly warned meeting. 
I think it could be this meeting and yes, both, both boards would have to act on this. Yes, yes. If we're ready to this meeting, if we're not, that's fine. Who currently has, who currently is responsible for the old mill house building? Who currently that, takes care of That's currently a uh, shared it's responsibility. Currently shared. Yeah. Oh, oh, so having it in here that it was 100% the town really. That was a requested change by the village that we're oh, suggesting that not me. making that change. Okay. Yes, it was. Oh, it was oh, before quite a few of our board members on both the, the select board and the trustees. So just for clarification, to back up a minute, the meeting that was re referenced from January was the first time the joint boards got together to talk about the joint ownership of our buildings and putting together a draft of this MOU. We do not have an active MOU currently. We have a draft MOU and we're working through that draft process. Hopefully we can get to a point of ratifying this so that um, we don't have future discussion about it unless something I need is identified. But the idea is that um, we come to an agreement um, on these properties. Yep. So, um because, um, you know, with the whole mural thing, um, I think that we should be more specific with the, the garages and not just maintenance and improvement. And I don't know what the term, what, what a good term would be for um, having it be whatever you want to do with your building. You, you don't have to come to us, you can do whatever you want to with that building. And I'm, I'm referencing the mural. Mark? Um, when we say 100% responsible, does that mean we're 100% owners? No. Just 100% on the hook for cost. Okay. Who actually owns these properties? Uh, all the properties in this list are jointly owned by the town and village. In so, the uh, Evan, go. So, Diane, your suggestion uh, essentially <clears throat> would be changing the last sentence with something currently that reads decisions on building maintenance improvements will require only the affirmative vote of the town select board or village trustees uh, to something that says decisions on building maintenance, improvements, and changes. And use, I would just say and, and use. use. Buildings, I would say maintenance, use improvements, and use. So select board side, are we all comfortable with that? Yeah, with use. Yeah. I am. So my suggestion would be to add that under each heading. Um, for example, the town will be 100% responsible for the maintenance, comma, improvement, comma and use of the town board and that that be reflected in each for each building. Duncan, can you speak up please? I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, so my suggestion was that under each building where it describes uh, uh, for example I'm using the town garage, the town will be 100 percent responsible for the maintenance. I would suggest maintenance, comma, improvement, comma, and use of the town garage and that that be reflected for each building. And then do you want to add use in the second sentence also? Mm -hmm. What do you mean the second sentence? Well, decisions oh. on building maintenance improvements yeah. and use will gotcha. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially doing saying on this entire page to a find and replace. Mm -hmm. Every place that says uh, maintenance and improvement is replaced by maintenance, comma, improvement, comma, and use yes. throughout. Yes. 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 And that's for shared and the, the buildings that we're sharing and the buildings that one or the other body has 100% control of. I would say that, that applies to the buildings that are that one entity or the other has 100% responsibility. Before. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. 
I, it would apply to even the buildings that have 50% because we still need to be in agreement on that use for the 50% ownership also or responsibility. Yeah. Um, Ken, I apologize, my <laughs> Zoom is going in and out, so I can't see if you're going off on and off mute. Did you have anything you wanted to add to this? Nope. And trustees, are you comfortable with this proposed yeah. change, everyone? Yes. Yep. The only cautionary flag I would throw out, especially change of, especially a change of use, uh, is if it's one building or the other that's solely uh, used, used by one entity or another, it is still owned jointly by both boards in the town and village. So we wouldn't want to, on either side, allow for the other to demolish the building, demolish an asset that we both own. The town or, or the village might not be in agreement of that, but if we give carte blanche authority to each entity, then in essence, they could do that. So maybe, I think it's a really good point. Maybe we could put an additional category on the front page that says, um, de a definition that says, any place that references maintenance, improvement, and use um, gives the responsible party full authority for changes, but does not allow for demolition or reduction in value. Or you defy reduction in value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it doesn't result in reduction in value. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it's certainly taking it its point. It needs to not result in reduction in value, right? So the building, in theory, is going to reduce in value over time. Well, depending on the building, it may reduce in value, it may increase in value. But whatever change you're making to said structure um, doesn't reduce the value at the time the change is made, unless agreed upon by both parties. But as far as the destruction of a building, if it's being replaced with a similar or, you know, like our garage, we're going to be having to do something with that. Doesn't mean it's going to be destroyed, but it could be. So we'd be putting something back up similar. Uh, interesting point. Or I would just, Tom, Eric, say and keep it used the way the original amendment was. I don't, if we start figuring out what's the reduction value, you know, we could be here for days. I just think we keep it simple, we keep the use in, and not, and not worry about it. That would be my point. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I think Eric raises a valid point. Um, another example might be what if one entity or the other decided to change the use. For example, if we were to develop the industrial park and we move the highway department up there and we had a vacant building and we decided to change the use of that to commercial enterprise, it seems to me that that's the kind of thing that both boards should have a say on because the property is jointly owned. The thing that just crosses my mind is, okay, for a substantial um, change in use, I think substantial is like a typical legal term. I think that's a known term, right? So substantial change in use. Um, I think also a substantial change in its value or something to that effect. I think we should get advice on that actually, on what we, because I, I do think that loss of property value matters. It could matter. It may not matter to us right now, but it could matter to a future board um, for a future circumstance, such as the one that Ken's talking about. I think it's a good point because for example, and I'm not saying this is happening, so don't read anything into it, but for example, if, 
the village did tear down the garage and put, but they didn't put something else up, they would be without a structure that serves the purpose that they need. Um, and that would be a burden on both entities ultimately. So I think we do need to protect against that by having some sort of a clause built in. I, th I think these are all good points. And to me, it argues for not adopting something tonight, but for doing further research based on the comments, all valid that have been made. Yeah. So uh, speaking of follow-up at this point, and Steve, please jump in if I'm over speaking. Um, so Brian, are you okay with taking the action of following up on devaluation, significant change of use, and demolition, like those three categories, um, and working with Eric on that? Yeah. Would it be appropriate to ask the trustees if they have someone from their yeah. board that would like to work on that as well? Oh, uh, yeah. Eric, thank you, man. No, oh, Eric Bailey. Oh, Eric Bailey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, not you, Eric. I mean, oh, yeah. Eric Bailey. To him. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, just spelled with a K, not with a C. Are there any other discussion points on this at this point? I'm good. It's one of Duncan's the chairs. Pen. No, it's a Duncan's pen or a chair. It's not <laughs> There's me. a squeaking noise. It's not. <laughs> uh, it's not a chair. Um, okay. We do a motion on the table. Uh, you what was, what was the table? third thing? Significant yeah, change in use, ever. demolition? Uh, Demo. uh, devaluation. devaluation. Thank you. Okay. okay, we will have, uh, if there's no other items on this, we'll uh, table it for next time. Next up is town clerk treasurer succession fin. DJ, um, I know you've done a little, we talked about this a little bit, I know you've done a little bit of thought, had a little thought on this and some working discussions. Do you want to? Share your thoughts or anything else? Yeah, so we're looking about uh, making the position appointed, not uh, voted on. Uh, just because uh, when Rosemary retires, uh, we could get anybody that puts their name in the ring for this position and we could we'd be stuck with them. Uh, if we make it appointed, uh, like a three year term or something, at least we control uh, that the person that comes into that position will have uh, knowledge uh, because it'll be the same as the hiring process. So we were talking about doing that and then revamping uh, the, her job and the assistant uh, job a little bit uh, just to take all the burden off from one person and kind of split it between the two. So has your board already discussed and voted on having like wanting to go forward as appointed? No, I think I brought it up to him, but we're kind of waiting for this to come and just kind of put it out there and see how everybody's feelers are on it before we move forward with it. Sure. Okay. So from a select board standpoint, we've also talked about this and Eric has been talking about it for much longer than I've been on the board for sure. Um, and I think the consensus is, please tell me if you do not agree, but I think last we talked, the consensus was we also supported having a, an appointed um, town clerk. I don't know if the slash treasurer, they have to go hand in hand. They're two maybe separate separate positions. Them. So maybe if we separate them for a second, we've talked specifically about the town clerk being an appointed position. Um, if the town clerk is an appointed position, the thing I don't know, Rosemary, does that mean the treasurer would have to be an appointed or it already is? There are two separate positions. There are two separate positions. And, and treasurer right now is appointed? No. No. Well, treasurer is elected. They're both they're elected. Both elected. Oh, okay. And the town and village elect separately. But for the treasurer being elected, would there also be an option to talk about the treasurer being appointed? 
or is that a statutory thing? In my opinion, the treasurer is much more important to have appointed than the clerk. Um, you know, the treasurer's duty are all financial. And on the village side, the, the village treasurer has a lot greater responsibility. So what happens if they they vote, the town votes and the village votes, and one votes this treasurer for this and this treasurer for We'd have two separate treasurers. We'd have two separate treasurers. We could have and four. And they don't co me. Yeah, we could have four. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think the reason BJ was right, right. <laughs> Go ahead and the Go ahead and find part time position. I think the reason BJ was bringing this up because say Susan wants to do this, her not being a Johnson resident, mm -hmm. we would need to appoint her for this position, and that would make it a lot easier since how she's knowledgeable in the situation. And we have to go through any process to change what we've been doing in the past. It's a vote of the town or the village to do that. A charter change. It doesn't take a charter change. It does require a vote, though. Oh. And you guys would have to put it as a duly warned article. The voters would have to vote and approve it. And that could lead to a situation where the village voters said now they want to keep the elected position in the town voters or vice versa. Or, you know, both of them. I suspect that if we work with Rosemary and Rosemary agrees that this is a reasonable thing to do upon her retirement or to, you know, to make it coincide with your retirement, I suspect that if Rosemary stands up and says she thinks it's a good idea, everybody's going to say it's a good idea. You're powerful. Well, let me ask you, would we both have to have it on our voting or would the yeah. town be able to do it since we also have village voters for the town. No, we have separate. We have different. We have different entities. We have to have the different articles. Because yeah. okay. I'm just thinking about the reason I want to kind of move now is, uh, God forbid, something happened within the next year or whatever. I'd kind of like to just not wait until last the last minute and then step into something that we're going to screw ourselves on. Like I'd rather kind of work up to it and kind of have a path laid out so we all know where we're going with it. Yeah. yeah. Rosemary, what did you want to say? I just want to say currently the town clerk and treasurer is a three-year position and the bill is a one-year position. And my term is up and it's coming here for the town. For, for the town? For the town. But you plan to run one one more, one more time. Yep. Great. I, I agree. I think we should try to resolve this sooner rather than later. Not wait right until Rosemary's about to come. and have it start and have it stop start. You know, with the with all the voting and everything, have it start when she stops. Like nothing changes until she retires, and that's when it will start. So it I would have dis to I would disagree with that. Okay, the actual planning forward way to do it is for it to be warned and voted on for the town. Because our meeting is in March and the village is in April, warned and done. Um, and if both entities voted in favor of it, Rosemary could be the first appointed appointed town. I got you. Town appointed town. I got you. That yeah, would be done with the Go ahead, Just the way it would work is it would go before the voters this town meeting if we did it in, in for the town. Right. She'll be reelected on town meeting oh, day. Oh, that's a good point. So yeah. for the town, it won't take effect until her term is up in three four, years. Four twenty-six. So if the village yeah, is, is a one-year term, yeah. and they approved it in April, in one year, her term would be up. Twenty twenty-four. And then the village could just appoint her for two more years. Gotcha. Right. And then when she does retire, it would be an appointment. That's if we want to. That's right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we can come up with a way to not let Rosemary retire, that would be beneficial. Be <laughs> yeah. She might not agree with you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so, Rosemary, help me out here. I, I think there is a section in the statute relative to appointment that if the voters were to vote at the same meeting where you were elected, 
that it would allow for the orderly transition from elected to appointed in their, their timelines and everything set out in statute. Am I, am I wrong on that? Or? So you're basically saying that the village could warn a special vote on town meeting day and the town meeting day could be the town vote, the, right, the town ballot could be the town vote and the village ballot could be a single item on town meeting day. Is that what you're suggesting? No, what I'm suggesting is that the statute envisions a transition process between uh, an elected position and an appointed position. And if the, if, there, if the town has an article to appoint, which is approved, then they, and, and Rosemary is running for election in that same year, which she would be doing, um, that, there, that there's a statutory process that allows for the orderly transition from elected to appointed. And are we also trying to rethink it? Mark? Assuming we move forward with this, would it be a joint board decision on who to appoint? <laughs> it would have to be. Uh -huh. And it would have to be, we don't have to. No, Not necessarily. We have four positions. We've got four, we've got four positions. We've got two separate boards. We could have four different people. Or we, because there's a chance that Rosemary is doing six people's job or jobs. She is doing six people's yeah, jobs. I know. Mm -hmm. So I think we should ponder how we're going to go about this appointment process. And I don't know whether that's in statute or whether we want to work together on this, or maybe by then we'll be merged and it won't be an issue. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. I would be interested in hearing Rosemary's opinion as to whether or not one, one option or one possibility would be to do the treasurer first and then the clerk at some future date. And I'm curious as to whether or not you have strong feelings one way or the other, whether a clerk should be appointed versus elected versus the treasurer. treasurer. Position I feel is more, it's a harder of two position. And the one requiring more expertise. Yes. yes. You know, the clerk is basically um, the elect, chief election official and for of the elections for the town. Yep. And, and licenses and all that stuff. But, but it's not, I mean, don't, don't take me wrong, it's not rocket science. Whereas Rosemary's expertise in the financial end of things is extremely important and very valuable. We definitely need somebody that has the family experience yeah. to get for their position. Okay. But um, don't most of the other towns, their town clerk is the treasurer as well? No, no. no. some of the larger ones won't. No, the larger ones, but Hyde Park, Cambridge. Those more are they the same person? They, they all have finance divisions. Oh, they do. Yes, even my park has a finance person. Oh, teacher. Uh, one of the things that when I was talking to Beth about um, later on down the road, uh, liking to see something like the town clerk and the assistant town clerk, and the assistant town clerk ends up being the treasurer, and the town clerk being the assistant treasurer. Some towns it, it is like that. So it's kind of like a shared, and it's two people having a burden instead of one, and then they're uh, checking each other's stuff, basically. There's, yeah. yeah, it sounds like it's structured this way to have lots of options. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I'm just I'm generally hearing lots of support for appointing the treasurer specifically, and that same support for appointing the clerk, unless I'm misreading anyone. So would it be beneficial to do the treasurer initially while you're still the clerk? And then we have a treasurer take that responsibility off you for the last two years of your, and there's a treasurer here and she's here to help transition. But well, wouldn't that be, 
Who's your assistant treasurer now? Susan. So you're basically saying have Susan as the as the treasurer instead of the assistant treasurer, have her I didn't take know on there was an assistant. Yeah, um, take on a full responsibility and take that off from Rosemary. And that way she's learning she's that learning. over well, the next few years. Still here. I'm giving Susan a warm warm. I was gonna say I'm sure, sure you're getting that. So oh, okay. Um, I think that because each of us can make our own decisions, it sounds like we have alignment. So maybe we should just take it back to our regular boards and our regular boards can vote. We don't have to do it tonight. It can give Rosemary a little time to think things through, like all the things we've talked about. So um, let's do that. And then you can tell us where they're sure. thinking and vice versa. <laughs> I, I think one thing that I don't know if it was you that brought it up, but I think it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a separate treasurer for the village and a separate treasurer for the town. I don't know whether you would feel that way or not, Rosemary. There's a lot of treasure stuff in the village of all the enterprises. So. The, 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 the greater part of your job is treasure, really, is village. Somebody new without your experience coming into this, would you feel new people coming into it, are they better off splitting that position and having two different entities since they don't have your knowledge of everything? So you're saying that you think maybe we should have a separate village in a, in town treasurer? Is would the would the town piece be a full time position? Yeah. So in that case, it might make more sense to have the clerk and treasurer both be appointed, which could be one person. In the village, and the village would have their own um, treasurer, possibly. I think I'm. If I if I hear Rosemary, I think that's what she's saying, and that goes to, to the point that I was asking about whether it was whether or not there needs to be coordination and cooperation between the village trustees and us with appointing the treasurer, and maybe there doesn't. Right. So the town clerk. One town clerk for both of us, or would we each have different? Would we each have different town clerks in that scenario? I just asked because you're talking about the treasurer for the village and the town clerk. Okay, if we have a treasurer, would we need our own town clerk, or are we like? I'm just trying to figure out that that blend there. Well, it's a village clerk, and and there really is a the village clerk doesn't do. What's the village clerk do? Not much. Like, you know, village elections. Well, that's usually once a year. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the town clerk, because the village, you know, the town clerk is responsible for the land records and licenses and running town elections, et cetera. So, you know, the village clerk doesn't really have a. So we could end up with something part time for jobs and something on tax bills. That could change. That's the subboard and trustees are at their DC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we've seen this for us. Let's move on, shall we? Okay. Website overhaul plan. I can give a little update on this. Um, when we contracted with our new web services provider, uh, the, some of the offers that we got included new websites and uh, kind of more extensive packages than we were looking for at the time. But there was a lot of interest expressed in revisiting that topic. Um, our website is pretty out of date, you know, really could use a, a cosmetic overhaul. And so we're, we're bringing, bringing that up again here. Um, you know, we got some of the prices the last time. It will be pretty expensive for an overhaul, but there are options out there. Uh, one of the things, one of the big price differences that I want to mention is uh, going with some of the websites that we saw the last time. 
they're kind of canned websites that are relatively easy to maintain. They're going to be based on a format that the company already has. Those are a lot cheaper than a custom uh, website, which would most likely be a lot flashier, look better, uh, but a considerably increased investment. Who currently does maintain all that? It is. Yeah, Lydia's yeah. doing most of it for us right now, but it's Elise, I think is the woman's name that. Park. Yeah. We're contracting with an individual in Hyde Park who does uh, WordPress hosting and maintenance. And we recently contracted with her within the past year because the former person passed away and they were really stuck and needed to get somebody. Else. So does she update it? She we do the regular updates. She makes sure that we get security patches, uh, both applied to the website, also onto the server, uh, and keeps it running if there's any uh, outage. But she doesn't do content. Thank you. Yeah, she doesn't do content for us. Could she do content? And is that what we're looking for? Excuse me? No, I don't think so. You don't think she's capable of it? Or? Uh, I'm not saying she's not capable of it. I'm sure she's capable of it. But we have, like, we have staff that we already have in the office. Why wouldn't we have them do the content? Yeah. For clarity, or when you when Beth said content, were you thinking design? Beth was talking about like the meeting minutes that get uploaded. That's done in here by Lydia. Changing text. Right. And that's content the to the website. It's not the design of. Okay, I was confused. So, who puts events on and that kind of thing? It's, it's Mostly Lydia. Okay. The way that the website is structured so, when you go to a website, there's menus in different places, right? Mm -hmm. Where those menus are and what those menus allow you to do is the design of the website. That's not something we can do. We can update any text, essentially, pictures, that kind of thing. Like, we can update the content. <laughs> But not the structure of the site itself. And that's what. Um, that's what we were I interested in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I believe it's at least, but yeah. she works. We were put in touch with her through the Royal Economic Development Corporation. Oh. Yes, <laughs> do we have specific? design layout issues that we feel the website is lacking on and therefore you know brian you mentioned like a canned product my first question would be is the canned product based on a municipal application for some of the uh, some of the bids we received last time were from organizations that specialize in municipalities. So there are, there are I mean, if you remember our website, uh, I think there's a couple other towns still using it, but there was a grant program that paid for our website and it paid for a bunch of other towns to get websites at the same time. So you went around and, and several towns in Vermont had websites that looked virtually the same. It would be, a canned website would be like that again with just a, kind of more updated look and feel. You know, it would function and behave a little bit more like a more, a more current website. Uh, I am not aware of any serious functional deficiencies with our website, uh, but I have heard from quite a few people that they don't think our website is very attractive and that it doesn't do a very good job of selling Johnson to visitors. It doesn't. I'm on it right now. I, I haven't, I've never even looked at it. It's very um, I think it does limit our ability to do things. I think that there are some functionalities that we could use. We could take input more easily. We could, in theory, actually have ads on it and create a little bit of revenue and help support the cost of the website, in theory, if we're not anything too crazy. Um, we could 
incorporate payment processing for things like registrations or maybe even take tax payments online if it's beneficial. I think there are some options that uh, I wouldn't put my credit card on our website. And I think there are some options that would get us a little bit further um, if we were to revamp what we have today. Good things like dog licenses and all that good right. stuff. Right. Our um, member who's working on a cloud based animal license program, <coughs> which would be able to be a um, And we're in the community. Hopefully, we'll have it for the next dog season in April. That's great news. I wish I had come out with something so when we go to animal control calls that we have information on the animals in that house that have licenses and everything. You might be able Instead to, of it's going to be a web based, it's going to be web based program. You may be able to be awesome. Well, I think the um, just looking at this site, anybody that is, if somebody wants to come here to apply for a teaching job. And go, oh, I wonder what that town is like. I wonder what the village is. Like. <coughs> when they pull this up, there's two pictures one of the Masonic Temple, and I forget the other one is. Um, kind of the same thing. It's almost the same, exact same picture. Anyway, there should be pictures of the ice rink on there. There should be pictures of the rail trail, the village green. There should be things that, should, even the elementary school, because we have a nice looking, mm -hmm. those things should all pop up when somebody. Google Johnson Vermont. It matters. Not just, yeah, because it's really it's like separate and it's very nondescript. It's, well, even if it's not, it should be like like this is broken down into the ARPA survey notice. But in between those things, there should be some the Ted Alexander Center. Yeah, all, kinds all of those kinds cool of things stuff. should be on it. Go ahead. I think you're getting very much into details. I think what is really needed. Is support from both towns on whether we want proposals for website redesign or we don't. Because mm -hmm. they're they're all great details, but we can't design the whole thing out in this. Well, we need to dog. tell somebody what we want. But the thing we is, need to know what it costs first. Right. Yeah. So is the village willing to put the effort into looking at is this going to be a priority for you? I guess is really the question. And I think we have the same question, right? We have our priorities too. This was not at the top, it was a few rows down. But if we wanted to work on something together to understand what the costs would be and what our options would be, we just, I think, just need to understand the interest. What do you think, Steve? Do you remember off the top of your head what the numbers were last year? I can't remember. I can look it up. Were, yeah, there was there were in the tens of thousands. Yeah, well, for sure. But up to the 50, 60 range. No. I feel like they were like 15 to 30 ish. That's exactly what I, I would say. Well, sir. Mark. Again, is this a 50 50 split cost? We're going to spend 30 grand on our website. Okay. I think that's what we'd have to We'd have to make the commitment to work through how we're going to figure this out. Um, yeah. So, don't know. Because I assume the website is mostly about the village anyways. I, I mean, uh, spend thirty grand to put pictures on the website is a pretty silly idea. The website needs to be functional to direct people to the minutes, to the government ordinances, simple stuff. It's got to be easy to navigate. It can't be full of pop-ups, advertisements. You know, I mean, it, it should be a simple thing to find out information on and just to spend a lot of money to put pictures on there and advertising really silly. Well, advertising, we don't spend money on. We, we got to spend on. 30 grand to put advertising on it. That's spending money. I, I understand your point. But the thing is the functional side of it, I think is the important part. Can I agree? And it's about paying your utility bills, for example. Uh, I could see that be something that's very <coughs> for the village. Correct. And then and then we'd have to come up with some really good security because I don't know, Copley Hospital, UVM, everybody's getting hacked. And so we're going to hope that the village and town website will protect my credit card if I have to pay my taxes or buy my dog license online. I don't think that's doable with us. Uh, the village does currently contract with a vendor for online payment processing. Mm -hmm. 
So then I wouldn't see why the village would want to contribute 30 grand to a bill to, for you guys to put payments on there. Okay. Mark. <laughs> Moving over. <laughs> That's why we can't afford electricity. <laughs> I admitted I had a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that we should spend the money because this is the face of Johnson. More people are going to are going to Google and see Johnson on the internet than are going to drive through it. And when people think about Johnson and go to this website, I guess disagree with Ken. It needs to have pictures. It needs to be the face of Johnson. It needs to be selling Johnson. Need to promote Johnson. As, and promote Johnson. You know, so I don't. You know, I mean, everything's done on the internet nowadays. Mm -hmm. Anywhere I go, I, I search on the internet before I go there to see what, what's available. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what this is gonna be. The first thing when somebody says, oh, I'm going through Johnson, they're gonna Google that, they're gonna see our website. Hopefully it's gotta be more than just meeting minutes because they're just gonna drive right through. No, I think we need to. I think it. I think we. I think it really. We have so much to promote here. Right. But back to Evan's point is, let's decide that we're going to do a the format and then the promotion. It should be is. sectional. We're either going to we're either going to talk about it or not. The question is, are we going to talk about it? Yeah. If we, if both door, boards decide to talk about it, um, there is a separate recreational website there is a separate historic society website if if the town and the village were going to do a rebuild for whatever reason it would be a good idea to combine those so their websites are they pages off from the the main website or are they standalone websites standalone, standalone. Oh. Yeah. fire department is a standalone website i believe so all of these individual places, there's costs associated. There's costs associated with the third party payment processing. There's costs all over the place. And I'm not saying those costs will go away. They won't go away. There are always going to be costs. But are we utilizing our are we use, utilizing our tools in the right way? Um, so I guess the question from this, the I'm going to ask like whether they need to get consensus of the village afterward. But is the select board interested in pursuing this at this point? Pursuing talks with the village? Yes. Yes. Does it cost anything to point out? Okay. C. Oh, yeah. We have consensus. Absolutely. You know, you were saying that the historical has their page. It doesn't tell you that when you go to jump, doesn't tell you that the fire department has their own. Right. That information should be on here, that you can go to the historical society page. You can go to the fire department page, you can go to Tuesday Night Live. It doesn't say any of that on here. A very good example, the uh, Enosburg, Vermont. They have their own electric utility, they have their own sewer and water, they have historic but society, they have their, fire but their website. Yeah, go to it. Oh. Comparison. Um, no, I'll do that. Okay. Ken, so Ken are you willing to um, put it on the table for the village to talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. Okay. So, what is the action coming out of this? Is the action for Ryan and Eric with a K to talk? <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Um. I can start by circulating the bids that we received last time. They're not going to be valid anymore, but it will help you understand what we're looking at. Um, I think that it is unlikely that either board has the money for this in their current budget. So I think that this is going to be a, I think it having that Having a couple more discussions about are we going to commit to this? Are we going to include money for it in our budgets? Uh, it's going to be appropriate before. Okay, for action items for takeaway, I would personally like to see, and please chime in if anyone has additional, but I would personally like to see what our current expenses are for all things electronic, and that includes our committee sites. 
um, and mm -hmm. other payment processing or other sites with other um, types of sites that we have. So basically, what are our costs? Um, what functionality are we aware of that we're lacking? I mean, you're not mm -hmm. going to get a representation of that right now, but if we can at least start thinking about that and folks have thoughts on that, um, for anyone to either Steve, myself, or Brian and Eric. Um, and then also what those costs would be. Um, and the, the thing about that original cost, like each of those original costs, um, how would that change with a new website? Or do, do we think it would change at all or not? And it could be a best guess. Do we pay for those other sites that we're talking about? Well, there's always a listing fees, no matter what. I'm just wondering if we pay for it or they pay for it. I mean, how that goes. The committees, you mean? Yeah. I just asked because, I mean, if we if we had a main page and then had the sites off from it, uh, pages built off from it for all these other things, that would wipe out all those other costs and it could kind of be combined into yeah. this main page that we're trying to create since we're not yeah. splitting it everywhere else. Yeah, that's why we need to have the cost analysis. Yeah. Uh, um, I I am one that believes in not reinventing the wheel if we don't have to. So evidence made a suggestion to take a look at the Enisberg website. Um, There's is, quite a few other. Oh yeah, Waterbury has a nice one. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if there are entities out there that have the cookie cutter approach, such as Enosburg or Waterbury, it seems to me those are the kinds of things that we ought to be looking at. But I also think we ought to be looking at, and I think this is going to take some coordination with the, the financial guru sitting at the end of the table, but, you know, the whole question of electronic payments, I, I'm not... It, 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 if, the, if, if, I, if I can pay my water and sewer line bill online, I'm not aware of it. <laughs> I come here every month and, and uh, give Marla a chat. Um, so being able to, you know, being able to pay my utility bills would be kind of nice. Um, but I also recognize there are very real security issues. I just got a notice from my doctor's office saying they've been hacked and my information might be out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's got to be part of the conversation. My question is for Brian. You said that we do take in payments, right? Are are they just generic payments like uh, your credit card, or is the whole gambit of like Apple Pay and Google Pay or whatever those are? You know, just credit cards. Card. How it much really different would it be to add? That because I mean everybody's going different ways with PayPal and all that nowadays. I wouldn't think it'd be that much. It depends. So all the different payment processors have different fee structures depending on who you use, like who the payment processor is, and mm -hmm. also the payment processor may not actually be the third party we're contracting with. The third oh, party we're contracting with likely contracts the payment processor, and each of those different payment options have different fees, fees associated. So. We're going to need to understand that from bids we get. Um, Apparently, the customer pays the service fee. They right. pay a service fee to supplement if they use the cost, cards. But if they use a credit card. But no one, we don't, none of us actually see the actual payment processing cost. But if, if I were a village trustee, I would be really seriously looking at electronic payments because it means you don't have to send out a paper bill. Which means you save some mm -hmm. amount of dollars every month if people get a, you know, I know I my electric <clears throat> bill at home, it just comes in my and I look at it and I push pay and it's done and it saves it a couple bucks every every bill. Make your guess a buck or two to send out a bill. Maybe probably not quite half the email bills. Yeah. But they can't pay them all in that. Right. right. Yeah, and that convenience. I mean, for my business, we just started doing like the PayPal and everything, and we put the cost to the customer and everything. But just that convenience is so much easier. That's why I was asking Brian about is it just checks or is it that whole gambit of uh, payable ways? Because different people use different methods. Okay. So, 
Um, we'll have, do a brand new action. We come back together for an action meeting. We can keep this back up and determine whether or not we want to build a subcommittee. I feel like this is subcommittee work if we're going to go down all of these different avenues. Um, so this is the next one, too, Brian. Good. And I think I've got all of the questions that you want before the next meeting about current expenses on all websites, uh, any deficits we have in the functionality of our current website, uh, the cost for uh, sorry, I'm confused by my own notes here. <laughs> That's not my website. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I have old website costs and I don't know what I meant by that. Uh, and then I've got uh, follow up with Enosburg and Waterbury about who they use and, and who their vendors were. It was your um, estimates of previous. Thank you. My estimate, the estimates that we got before. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, if they would be willing to share, I assume their budget is public record. And Possibly their actual expenses are too. If they'd be willing to share that, that would be great. The Enosburg and Waterbury. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a you and Eric thing. It's yeah. So We're throwing a lot at you. Yeah. I'm I'm here, so I can <laughs> yeah. taking yeah. it, and I'll, I'll share it with with Eric. Right. I volunteer for it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, Evan's point, you guys, there everything we talk about, there's going to be a lot, and you have to divide the responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is both meeting. boards are directing directly. Yeah. <laughs> you can split it up and work as a team. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, next up. Um, the other thing about, sorry, the other thing about websites is I'm going to work with that. I didn't say it. An understanding of possible grants. Not that we qualify, not any digging, just the possibility. Yep. What about ARPA money? It would be eligible for our money. Okay. Uh, cyber security. <laughs> cyber. Yes. So um, this isn't really the purview of the tech group. They can <clears throat> offer some training for us, uh, but this isn't trainings and things like this aren't really their uh, their specialty. What do you uh, mean by the tech group? Oh, thank you. Um, we current for IT services, we currently contract with the tech group of Vermont. Uh, <clears throat> they provide us <coughs> kind of all of our internal <clears throat> IT services. They provide security updates. They do provide security alerts. I got one recently about uh, you know a, a hacking group that we were concerned we were being targeted with. Um, so that they they are on top of this, but this isn't, isn't really a regular service that they provide. But they might be able to help us obtain it. Is there interest in knowing that there will probably or definitely be some additional expense? Is there interest in us finding somebody to come and do cybersecurity training for staff and uh, possibly extending it to select board and trustees? And by they. We, <laughs> the, ta the town is interested in having cybersecurity training because, to Ken's point earlier, if we get in a position which, by, which I'm pretty confident we are definitely vulnerable to, other than the fact that we have a lot of paper use, that's good. <laughs> that's yeah. well, uh, paper. But oh. paper use. <laughs> but um, the reality is that hackers are out there all the time and hacking of municipalities is profitable um so we really should have security training so that none of us training you mean the staff not us no i mean all of us oh. we're all on the network we are all oh. on the network we have town accounts we're all on the network all <laughs> of us including staff should understand what links to click and what not to click what pdf to open and what not to open Whose email addresses are valid email addresses, whose aren't. We should all have that training because any one of us can release a virus into our network. And if somebody calls you and they're going to buy a gift card, don't do it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And if somebody's spoofing, I actually had somebody contact me from Eric's account. Well, it looked like Eric's account. It wasn't Eric's account. It was me. 
and <laughs> and I called him like yeah. that's just one of the basic things just to talk School to the person that came from like this is kind of a weird message right. you know you usually say more than this like <laughs> yeah. was this you and he said no it wasn't it wasn't me no but like I I called him to verify like those are the kinds of things that we all need to try and talk mm -hmm. That's what this is about. It's about getting cybersecurity in place and whether we're we all willing to commit to it. And I would say typically this would be like a couple hour training. But yeah, really. somebody comes in, trains the staff for a couple hours. I would imagine probably the select board will take more time, but I do this. <laughs> I do this and repeat. Yeah. Yeah. Can you have to open the email? Right. <laughs> so I do this annually. At yeah. every place I've worked for the past 10 years, we do it annually. Yeah. Um, and it could be somebody in person, it could be an online training where you have to answer the questions right after each segment. So there's 15 segments, and you have to get through all those segments and it talks to you about each thing as you go through. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, all of them, whatever the method is, we, it has to be interactive. We have to be able to fail to learn. Like, um, so I think there are options that aren't as long as a couple of hours so one but so that you'd be sitting at your own computer at home doing this could be. Mm -hmm. could be could be could be could all come in for a training i mean yeah depends on probably depends on cost and, yeah. yeah i imagine it's going to be cost and availability <clears throat> yeah but we'll see but we haven't done a serious investigation about what's available other than is it you know a question about how much does our current contract provide for this? And the answer is not not much. Should we make a motion for up to a dollar amount? Or if we're both comfortable with the idea, our next meeting, I think we, we could have Eric and Brian present some numbers and we can make a motion then. That's probably a good idea. So you want that? to come up with perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's support for cybersecurity training from both boards. That's fine. Just one no cost. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And if one board doesn't agree, <clears throat> then they can be cut out of the email system. That's true. Um, I is, do actually think that we should have some security tied with our um, personnel policies. Not right now, but let's do it. Not right now, but. Is so there anyone should. else that has a account, email account that isn't working downstairs or board? Yes. Uh, yes, there are a couple. Not every committee gets has received an email address because those cost money. So we dole them out to a limited degree. But there are a number of committees that have email addresses. So would they have the same access and responsibility? Yeah. I would think so. The assessor. Uh, the assessor, yeah. And would like to meet Brigham and um, Dan Cobb, people like that. And Jason and mm -hmm. uh, Animal Control guys, either. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a list, right? We have yeah. our group on that. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any mystery email addresses that we don't know where it goes. We could track them all down. Okay, um, next up. So, Brian, you'll take the action to work with Eric. You'll just put all of these apps yep. and uh, figure out options for this week. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll provide you estimates and oh, yeah. a couple scenarios at the next meeting. You know, hopefully, something we can vote on. Um, just as an aside, I want to mention something that Beth said about uh, recognizing the email as possibly fraudulent. Uh, those short emails, if you get a short email that has an odd request in it, it's a really big red flag. They've learned a lot, a lot of the scammers have learned from messages in the past, had a lot of you know, broken English and they sounded weird. So the better current ones often come across in perfectly good English. They're representative of something that you might do. It's a very short, curt message from somebody. So Just to leave it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. I, I <clears throat>
Uh, another training opportunity that we've had some discussion about is uh, pursuing and bringing in some <coughs> talk about uh, active shooter training in the office. Well, they're just hiding underneath their desk. <laughs> what do you say? More than just hiding on, under oh. our desk. <laughs> I think that's in the event of a nuclear event. That's right, exactly. That's right. in case Russia. I think all that's needed from both boards on this item is support in having the emergency management coordinator and director work with the village manager and the town administrator on trying to find a cost associated with this. Is there support for the idea? Yeah. Ken? I mean, one of us could just throw on a mask and run in and see how Rosemary and him react. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> and on the select board side? More, more likely, they're going to run into a select board meeting for a village <laughs> just TV. Right. Yeah, I think it's important. Okay. Yes. Yep. yep. All right, that's important. Perfect. And we're good with that item. Your request proposals, please stick to the packet. All right. So here is paint. Thank you. What's it? This is painful. Yeah. Are these so these are numbers from last last year's purchases, right? Yes. So uh, they are. So essentially, the historic society is going to cost $15,000 to leave this year. You know, this is an RFP that tries to encompass town and village, all the places that we buy fuel. Mm -hmm. You know, that there was some broad support from the village when we brought this up earlier uh, that, you know, does the village want to be included in a bid like this? We've got this draft out. Are we ready to to go with it? I, these are all the figures are numbers that I got from uh, reports that Rosemary and Lydia ran for me on town and village. Uh, the proposal proposals to be submitted date should be changed. Yeah, we were a little past six or seconds. Well, we had we had brought this up on a select board meeting in the past. And this is what we had. Yes. Back then. So this comes from we review our orders every day and we pay a lot of money. Clearly, the number of gallons mm. spent. We all pay a lot of money in fuel. Uh, and it would be great if we could maybe it's not possible, but try to lock down pricing and um, to figure out who has better uh, costs. We're sure these numbers are accurate. I'm, I'm, like, I'm grilling it right now. Yeah, but it's like the, the fire department. 27,000 yeah. gallons. Okay. Mark, go ahead, Evan. I mean, go ahead, Duncan. The other Evan. The other Evan. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, under the proposal, regardless of whether the numbers are accurate or not, um, under the proposal shall provide the necessary information in the following sequence, price per unit and available quantities. Uh, in the past, a lot of the fuel dealers are inclined to give you what they refer to as so many cents above the rack price. Um, you know, one or two cents or two cents above rack price. And the rack price is a floating target. Um, so if we ask for a unit price, a fixed unit cost price, we're probably going to pay top dollar. Um, so I, I don't know exactly how we would want to modify this, but I would give the bidder the flexibility to provide a proposal, a pricing proposal that we could then analyze. Because I think in the past, we've certainly done well with the so many cents above the rack price concept. Maybe change this to just pricing proposal. 
Yeah, I mean, I think if we ask for a unit, uh, you know, the first thing that you, if somebody gets this, first thing I'm gonna do is call you up and say, are you looking for a fixed unit price? Um, and I don't think that's a good idea for us to ask for a fixed unit price because they're gonna, you know, if it's a year long contract, they're gonna, they're gonna bump it as high as they possibly can to make sure that they're covering their costs. Um, and I, you know, prices may go up, prices may go down. We may win, we may lose. But if we, if we ask for a, a pricing proposal that would give them the flexibility to give us, you know, a, a pricing pro pro proposal similar to what I'm talking about. In, in your train of thought, is it also worth putting out there um, pre-buy? I mean, we have a budget. We, we know our, what we have in the account. If we're going to burn 100,000 gallons of fuel oil, God forbid. Um, but is it worth floating out there? We'll pay you $100,000 on January 1. Or that's maybe the high number, but sometimes I pre bought fuel and got a good deal. And I, I like where I fully support your suggestion, but I'm just wondering if we're in a situation where we could possibly write a check for 20,000 gallons of fuel oil, would we get a better price? That's a good on? question. I mean, With they could, numbers. I think if it's left open to them to submit a pricing proposal if you could add including a pre-buy option um, to the yeah. pricing it, proposal. It, it, and again that's playing the game it can go up or down yeah you could pre-buy it high and mm -hmm. you're kicking yourself they usually do well on their pre-buy programs mm -hmm. we end up thinking we do well yeah but that's <laughs> yeah. yeah at least it's a known quantity and I was still looking at multiple vendors. Like for me, it's a multiple vendor thing. Like we just spend a lot of money straight paths to one vendor. Yeah. Always you want we have one main vendor and we have another vendor that does a little bit. <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that we don't coordinate with other towns and stuff. Like, don't we almost have to with some of these fuels? Because propane is one vendor usually, the vendor, and fuel oil is a different one, or um, not, necessarily. not necessarily. Not necessarily. The, the situation that we're currently in is we get our fuel oil and diesel products from one vendor and our propane from another vendor. And fuel and um, fuel oil and diesel is a lot, like it's in a lot. I was just thinking, I mean, we should probably get all the options of pre-buy included, but they probably would be looking to you know, have this pre-buy date at September-ish time frame. Right. Well, yeah. that's at the beginning of our fiscal year, we've not collected a lot of tax dollars yet, so that might uh, put us into a little bit of pinch the clump of that kind of money. And I, I could see where it would be a problem with the village because you're talking about two different fiscal budgets for the same winner. Mm. We, for pre-buy? Pre-buy, yeah. But, but we should probably still get the, the quotes of what it is. So from Brasso in 2000, in 2021 calendar year, so not fiscal year, calendar year, um, this report says we spent almost $72,000. And we spent in 2021 calendar year with course about $2,000. Does that sound right to you, Rosemary? That was just town, no. This is just town. Yes. yes. So, course, was that for propane? Propane, yes. Also, uh, so there's the diesel fuel and then even fuel. In the sewer, you guys, the wastewater treatment facility is all propane. I mean, this building is all propane. Mark, did you want to say something? Um, I was just wondering whether we own our propane tanks. Rosemary seems to think maybe we do. 
Do you know, Brian? Do you know? I don't know. Because uh, typically the distributor owns the tank. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're stuck with it the minute you That's take right. Well, I can address that. I just went through this with Fred's. They do, we have a thousand gallon tank for the daycare and we want to change providers. And when you change the provider you change to, there's a test on the tank. Yeah. And then they buy the tank from whoever you previously had. They don't dig it up and change the tank. And the other option is just own the tank itself. That, I, I tried that one time with courses and they wouldn't let you do it. Right, they don't want to. They won't let you do it. They want, they want you. Yeah. Above ground tanks are not an issue because Some, if, if you're buying from somebody, they'll they'll bring in a tank. It's the underground tanks mm -hmm. that are the issue. Some companies, if it's there, <clears> make you they'll like we had to uh, get rid of our old tank, which was thirty was years oil. old anyway, and get a new was one. That oil or propane? Propane, mm -hmm. very propane. Mm -hmm. So it can be a hassle to change. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else we need to do in terms of this uh, proposal? It sounds like the pre-buy option and fixed price. Basically, they know what their options are. We want to understand what their what each of the providers' options are. Yeah, so I'm going to change the price per unit to just pricing proposal. Proposal multiple because like I get two or three three options. I think in the middle of the summer, like we just want their list of different proposal types that they use. Understanding we may have missed the mark in timing for this year, well, we can still ask um, and also understanding it would not be prudent given the financial situation. Yep. I make one more possible suggestion. Yep. Uh, I wouldn't want a bidder to think that they are required to bid on propane if they don't provide it. So maybe under the proposal requirements, we could have something like. Um, Maybe the first bullet could be fuel types. Fuel types, fuel types being proposed or bid on. So right. it doesn't tie one vendor to provide both if they don't provide both. Yeah. You get, you get what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so I've got those two changes to the proposal requirements. And I uh, know that we're going to have to change the due date. What is the due date that we want to have? Oh, you know, October 13th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just fine. <laughs> well, we probably need to do it before our next meeting. And I think that it was in here, it would be November ish. Did it by the <laughs> Is that work for the trustee schedule too? That's pretty close. To could, we could do it the Friday before the trustees meeting in November, which means the select board would be voting on it the third week in November. Or if we have a joint meeting late in November, we could just do it all in one time. How about that? Do it the last week and the last week, the week after Thanksgiving. Deer season's coming up. Okay. <laughs> we need it. We need the numbers in before that. <laughs> we need to do it. We can't do that. It's too late. We need to do our health care stuff before then. So. Well, let's be clear. Deer season's going on now. <laughs> <laughs> Which it, one? The loading that starts that week. Spears. Okay. Oh. So November 7th is our first select board meeting. So it's a late select board meeting. And our second select board meeting is the 21st, which is the week of Thanksgiving. Why don't we have them do on the seventh? Uh, yeah. And then you, your meeting is the the fourteenth. Fourteenth. Yeah. Good. Did did it depend on the date? Seven. Right. Okay. By November seventh, I guess. Yeah. That's the ideal time. Yeah. It does say 4 p.m. November 7th, so that is enough time between when they're due and when the meeting starts. All right. While we're talking about fuel, we need to discuss the fuel pumps. 
down at the chair garages at some point. They're broken. <laughs> Okay, do you want hardware right now? Well, the metering system itself is broken. Should be addressed at some point. So is there's it, no way to figure out who's, who's getting well? All of, I believe all the employees down there are honest, but everybody has their own key. If you turn your key, you have to turn your key to turn the pump on and it runs your meter. You can start the pump, turn your key off, and your meter stops running. So when fuel doesn't add up, who picks up the difference? Mm. Town and village. Well, it's based on consumption. But the, whatever reading I have, which is typically less than what we are reading goes for. You have a reading on the fuel pumps of less than what we're being billed for? That doesn't work. It sounds like somebody's getting fuel. Mm -hmm. Or shutting their key off while the, while the pumps still work. It'll keep pumping once you turn your key off. Your yeah. meter will shut off. Yeah. So you just take it as percentages and split that. But that's not necessarily accurate. You just take it. Yeah. Right. Right. So if we're built for 100 mm -hmm. gallons of fuel. <laughs> We need a new she system. Had, we just needed the town yeah. used 50 and the village used 20. And then the town people them. were the ones turning their key off all the time, consistently all the time, then our percentages were off. So you're saying we need another another box. They don't use that. Okay. Another box where you turn your key, it goes on and they I'm saying that it needs to be addressed at a future meeting. Yep. Got it. It's on the agenda. Okay. Well, can we just <laughs> leave it here for some direction? Well, Brian Merrick to make it happen. Yeah, with the, all yeah. the employees to make sure, remind them to leave their key on until well, the, the meter be fixed. Can that be well, replaced? Yeah, I think we that, need to, but I mean, it's it's been happening like this for years. So why make a change today when we could fix the real problem? Correct, but we could have an electrician look at it. It should be easy enough to make the power of the pump turn off and on by the key. Yeah, you turn the key off, the pump should show up. Yeah, correct. But it does. Okay, all right. Um, let's, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, maybe we could have a motion for this one. Maybe we could have if fixing the pump, just flat out fixing the pump is less than $300, just do it or something like that. I'm actually going to make that. How much? That wasn't really warm. Okay, it's, no, it's worth yeah. it because it's so much money. Oh, well, I think it's within the purview of, of Brian and, and Eric to do it anyway. Just if it's less than a thousand dollars, it's yeah. within. It's within the purview. Yeah. Yeah. I would say for us, for the purpose. Fix it. Yeah. Make it happen. Okay. Yeah. I agree, Steve. We should give the consensus for Eric to make it happen. Are there enough agree? keys? Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree? What's it? Okay. Yes. It sounds like you. It sounds like Village has consensus. Okay. Harassment policy. This, I think this one. Do you have more than harassment policy on the personal policy side of things, Brian? No, I don't have more than that for the personal policy. I okay, included. Let's hand, over, let's hand it over in that yes. case. Yeah. Um, included the personal policy in the package. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought that would be helpful for reference, but we have. The, there's nothing on the town site about the personnel policy. I just thought that since the personnel policy does in some capacity address harassment already, uh, I just included it for reference. Yeah. Uh, I am going to turn this over to village representatives about the uh, employment harassment and discrimination policy uh, that you've been working on. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the main thing we've been working on is adopting a verbal harassment policy. We haven't been working on changing our basic, uh, the rest of it, I don't believe. Well, I think what we were working on was just harassment. And um, 
the one that I really liked was, and I sent it to the select board oh, yeah. members too, was the Milton um, harassment policy. I thought it read really well. Um, I read through this one that you put in the packet and um, it's, I think the Vermont League of Cities and Towns really liked this one here. But when she read the Milton one, she thought that people would really like reading and understand that policy better than, than these. And I don't know if you guys um, read. Yeah. yeah. So I, where I, did this come from? The one that says- I don't know. I'm not- I'm, uh, This is the one that I got from Eric uh, Bailey. I believe this is the one that he submitted to VLCT for review. He did submit it to VLCT? I have think so. I, I hesitate to speak, you know, to commit what, you know, what he may or may not have done just because I, I think that's what he did, but I, I, I... Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to him, but this sounds very, very familiar to the one I read that was from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, but I don't have a copy for everyone for the Milton um, proposal, but I would make copies. So I'm just comparing the League of Cities and Towns to this draft and definitely the first mm -hmm. four, uh, it's a it is that version. It's the league. Yeah. So, is the village's proposal or request to add this to the joint personnel policy? I believe it is. Yeah. I. But this would only affect Marla and Lydia for you guys. And our crew members. There's no ties in your union contract to the joint personnel policy Those correct that's being contracted. worked that's we are working on that we are okay. dealing with that with our union the union and everything and adopting there there is going to be a connection there so you're doing an amendment with that that's fine yep. but we're the town itself is in the middle of union negotiations and The joint personnel policy is important. And I don't know if I could we currently support. I don't know if I could <laughs> currently support adding this to the joint personnel policy. So but I can't speak for this is not necessarily a joint personnel. This is the town and village personnel policy. Uh, I meant I meant joint municipality personnel policy. But yeah, sorry. This is to all mm -hmm. Right, because it's a joint policy. Policy. Not this mm -hmm. board shared rules. Uh, under, yes. Okay. Thank you. And, and, Sorry. My understanding, Diane, was that we were to look at the Milton policy before we move forward on this. We are. It's going on our. It's on our November agenda. I already sent it to Eric. Okay. I'm going to make a suggestion. Um, I'm kind of with you. I, I personally would be uncomfortable making a blanket amendment to the town and village combined personnel policy to include this. I don't think that prevents the village from adopting a policy which could start out notwithstanding the joint combined personnel policy, this shall be the policy of the village with regard, with regard to employment harassment and discrimination. I think it's been many years, almost 20 years since the combined town and village personnel policy went into effect. There's been a couple of amendments here and there um, but I, my own personal opinion is the personnel policy itself is due for a review. Um, I think that we need to be really careful because the personnel policy is 
for the town, I can speak for, is part of our contract negotiations. Uh, and I would point out that the person, the existing personnel policy doesn't mention collective bargaining units at all yeah. because it was adopted prior to I it. think that maybe those discussions are a little bit above and beyond. What are your thoughts? We can make changes to the personnel policy. It, it just will not be uh, in effect with union members because the, the contract we approved with them was the personnel policy that was in effect at that day. As of last. Yeah, whenever it was. Yeah. Well, a simple statement in the personnel policy saying that any discrepancies between the adopted personnel policy and the collective bargaining agreement, the collective bargaining agreement would control. But the, the agreement also stipulated that there's a lot of references to the personnel policy, but it's a personnel policy that was in effect on the date that they, you know, we have signed the contract. Yep. But I understand that, but I still think that if you have an agreement, I mean, number one, if, if that's the person, if, if the agreement references the prior personnel policy, the agreement could reference the prior personnel policy. And that would control rather than the new policy. Yeah, the CBA shouldn't change. The CBA will be off from the the one that was there when it right. first went into effect. Yeah. Yep. Even if we change it now, the CBA is still off of the first one. If that's how the agreement reads. Yeah. Yeah. So my suggestion was going to be that we review the whole personnel mm -hmm. policy. Um, clearly with an eye towards the fact that we both now have collective bargaining units. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I, you know, we're not the first municipalities that have collective bargaining units um, and have personnel policies. So this isn't, again, I don't think this is rocket science. I think it can be done. The question is, do we want to, in the past, there's been a certain amount of reticence to opening this up because there have been differences and disagreements between the town and village on um, you know, the benefits um, that accrue under the personnel policy. My hesitation is that I'm not concerned about working through areas where we don't agree. That's part of negotiating, negotiation and compromise. Um, I'm more worried that we both do have union contracts and it almost feels like we should, if those union contracts reference the personnel policy, and pieces of the existing personnel policy are not part of the contracts themselves, then maybe we shouldn't have personnel policies or maybe we should be talking about our contracts um, to contain information that's in the personnel policy and strip that kind of stuff out of the personnel policy. Maybe that's what you're saying by making them um, more agreeable to the union negotiations and collective bargaining. Yes. Well, I'm sure there's parts of the existing personnel policy that our staff and your staff are very find very attractive, such as the holiday, um, the combined time off, all those things. I'm, per, I'm sure uh, are probably. Uh, I just think those things can be worked out. If there's a difference between contract negotiations and a specific carve out in the negotiation, then that controls. And otherwise, the personnel policy applies. I don't. I don't see that as being a, a huge issue. So our topic isn't about the personnel policy right now, though. Our topic is about the personnel policy. Well, it is because they're asking that this be, and I'm stating that me personally, I can't support adopting this into our combined personnel policy. Okay. Okay. Um, and is that because of the timing of adopting it or the content? It has nothing to do with the content. Okay. It, it has more to do with doing a comprehensive review of the personnel policy in considering this in the context of a comprehensive review and approval. And, but you don't care what time? I mean, we're in negotiations right now. Is that what is stopping you? 
Um, you just want to read, you just want to do, do the whole personnel policy. I think the whole personnel policy is due for a due for a facelift. I don't care when we do it. We're, obviously, we're not going to do it right away. Um, you know, this is this is a discussion far down the road. As, but again, I don't think if, you know if the village is really committed to adopting some of the, something of this nature. Yeah. I don't see any reason why the village can't adopt it. Again, with a statement such as "notwithstanding the provisions found in the personnel policy, this policy shall govern." The thing that Steve and I talked about a while back, a little while back, when this first came up, was that the town does have uh, appendix. Uh, no, why am I picking the wrong word? The word you might want. Okay. okay, well, appendix is fine. Close enough to the policy for town specific. Addendum. An addendum, thank you. An addendum for a town specific item. I don't know the context of it. Um, but that is a potential for if you wanted to adopt the harassment policy specifically, you could have an addendum specific to the village mm -hmm. uh, and allow you to move forward without us pulling you up. Okay. It, it, the only problem is with our shared employees that we have to have something that's consistent for they can't, they can't be too different if there were uh, the thought. Correct me if I'm wrong. There are no technically shared employees. There is reimbursement for services of employees. Correct. So your this amendment would only be effective for Marla. It would not be effective for Lydia because the town reimburses the village for some of Marla's time, and the village reimburses the town for some of Lydia's time. Is that correct? So, so there are no joint employees. Which mm. yeah. The question I got uh, was it the village's intent, to, the current personnel policy only uh, identifies sexual harassment. Was the intent to replace that with this one that's all inclusive of everything? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's to uh, compass yeah. nowadays, it's to encompass everything. Any uh, form. Form harassment. Okay. Correct. But this one doesn't talk about sexual harassment if we're going to replace it. Well, that's already in. Isn't that already in? You're saying this is going to be added to mm -hmm. what's in here. Is that what you're saying? The, the, the initial plan that we had was we already had something for sexual harassment. Yeah. We needed to put something in that encompassed all the other harassment. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we decide to later on down the road, say the Milton one has a sexual harassment one in and we decide to go that route, then would be And one of the reasons I think a review of the existing policy is appropriate at this time is I, I don't know this for a fact, but you know, that was adopted in 2003, I believe. Um, yeah, I wanted her to update it. <laughs> I strongly suspect that federal law has changed between 2003 and now and that our personal policy does not comply with federal law in some respects. I was just thinking a very mental note of all of this. Yeah, our thing is that we just want to try to get, we're trying to get this in before our negotiations. Uh, we're trying to get into a policy, but I definitely agree with the policy. It's definitely something we should work so then, up. Then the trustees Bridget, should just move forward like we were discussing. And then down the road, if the town decides that we want to work on this, we can just redo it. Yeah, as an addendum. Correct. Do you want to pull the select board? Or? Yeah, I'll pull the select board. I don't think there's don't. general general support from the select board to add this to the joint policy. There has been a request to add it as a full review of the policy. Yeah, but I don't think we need to talk about no. I my comment was really in the context of adopting this gotcha. into our I don't I don't think it's already. Okay. Are you ready to move on? Um merger discussions. 
Great. Uh, this is another one that I'll mostly turn over. Uh, I can see. This begins on page 37. Um, a little refresher about this. The, we had a few interested uh, select board members and trustees get together to discuss and uh, do a little bit of outlining on merger. I think it kind of fell by the wayside uh, as other priorities rose. Uh, and we are bringing it up again. I think Beth and I can catch new members up to speed. Uh, these are just a bunch of little cell things, right? Um, in the first page, which is packet 37, is a sample tax bill for the town, uh, followed by a sample tax bill for the village, followed by a sample tax bill for a merged town and village together. Now, these are all under assumption. Um, you kind of have to make some guesses, but it's with the understanding that the pilot payment from, which will be the Vermont State Colleges, the $60,000 that the village receives would disappear and both uh, general budget for the village and the budget of the town would be merged. Why would it disappear? Uh, Waterbury did with their state complex when they ceased. So we're just using that as an example. You don't know that it would. Yeah, we don't know. Meredith just had now. said that it would be taken away in her research when she was talking with Waterbury. Um, it, is that a guaranteed takeaway? No, but we had to do numbers on something, right? Like the only Why did you say it would be taken away? Because the town gets a pilot payment currently and the village gets a pilot payment. <coughs> but under a merged municipality, there would only be one pilot payment and it would be the larger of the two, which is currently the town's. But the pilot's based on property. Right. Yeah, it's, it's payment in lieu of tax. It's payment in lieu of tax based on property evaluation that the state said. Well, Rosemary just said if there's no village tax because it would only be town tax, it would then it would, would go away. We wouldn't have a second, second pilot payment. It wouldn't go up. But I, the town might go up. The, the, town, up. the town would go the up because that property is on that no, property is on the grand list. $60,000. So anyway, can, can we finish explaining this? Mm -hmm. um, this is showing a sample tax bill based on evaluations of $100,000, $150,000, dollars so on and so forth, every $50,000 at the tax rate of the town, tax rate of the village, and what a combined budget would be. So you can tell that the tax rate, if we combine both budgets, would be higher for a shared for the whole town combined. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the second page is tax impacts for town residents. You can see per hundred thousand dollars that their tax bill would go up seventy two dollars and forty cents. The lower table is what the impact on villages residents would be, and they would save uh, one hundred and eleven dollars and 18 cents per hundred thousand dollars of evaluation um the con constants are on packet page 39 and these are four fiscal years so obviously the villages in fiscal years there and the lodge frame list of 2021 is there so to evan's point we had to make assumptions in this exercise there's no knowns yep. so assumptions are important and we clearly define what those assumptions are so that it informs what these numbers are suggesting. Um, right. you knowing can see it's never going to be perfect, never going to be right. You can see the village's tax revenue for their general budget on tax page 39, and then it compensated for no pilot payment. I see that. Um, I don't agree, but I see it. Well, <laughs> keep going down. Um, so this okay, page 40 would show a sample tax bill of an increase of 8% for town taxpayers, a decrease of 11% for village taxpayers because they would save $111, but they have spent 71 town taxes. 
Okay. Based on the assumptions. Yep. Everything's based, based on relatively accurate assumptions, but I'm not done yet. Um, and then the last table is just for that large scope of flights for both side by side. Right. The last table is everything all wrapped up into one. Now, where our merger committee had left off, which at last year's before there was new boards, uh, it was Steve and BJ and Beth and myself. Um, the next thing that we were tasked with was to get an estimate on what a merger study would cost. Um, and essentially, I could not get um, the gentleman who did the report, a merger, to give us a merger study unless there was quote unquote buy in from the village. I had emailed um, the village's representatives at the time, I hadn't heard anything back. But one thing that Kent Gardner, his name had mentioned, is that the only way to get buy-in from village and town taxpayers would be to incorporate uh, Title 24, um, BSA subsection 1483, which essentially, um, to really shorthand it would be that you can charge a specialty tax rate for, for certain amenities. So even if the municipalities were merged under a merged government, essentially you could keep the same lines as the village and town taxes and village taxes would not change at all, except that $60,000 in pilot money would be gone. Yeah, it's, it's like a special tax. Is that accurate? Here. Yes. That, and that's, that's why you thought I wasn't accurate. Here. It doesn't matter where you're wrong. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at numbers. Then we would not pay the $10,000 to the village. Just about, I assume the 10% of the grant. Right, yeah, or whatever. So right. the $60,000 payment to the village and the assumptions. Um, it was assumed that that money would still have to be spent in their general government because it comes into their general fund, correct, Rosemary? And it's used. So we could still say that the town doesn't have to pay the village essentially under a merged government, but $60,000 has to come from somewhere for expenses. So you, yeah, that's, yeah. that's an in and out scenario, money in, money out. Mm -hmm. You can't just subtract sixty thousand dollars because you need it on the other side. So, Rosemary, what's your thought behind this? So, I heard I heard you say that we wouldn't get the sixty thousand pilot. We would likely get some portion of that. Like, what are your thoughts behind all of this? Because the town tax rate would go up, so that wouldn't be their percentage of the town would go up. The town's percentage would go up. I understand. The towns would because they're one merged entity. But the villages pilot uh, money would cease to exist. Okay, well, let's just call it the merged entity for, yes, Sarah, even... for clarity's sake. But the merged entity would go up that pilot. Um, what, like, educated guess is not be perfect. Do you think it's half of the 60, a quarter of, three quarters of? Like, I just don't know. Yeah. It's 8% of what we currently get. That's just one but, of the. This is all it's focused on the money, and that's not the reason. That's right. That's not the reason. I mean, that that's fine and dandy, and we can figure out numbers, and that's a starting place. But really, the reason to merge is a lot more than just money. I mean, all we've talked about tonight, and, and we continue to talk about, who's paying the fuel, who's using the fuel, who's using rosemary, who's that. It, that is a time suck, and probably a money suck too. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason we merge, not, not these numbers. Because if you go out to the town and say, we're going to raise everybody's tax bill for 100 bucks that lives in the town, it will go down in flames. But if we can show that it makes better government and it, and it will create efficiencies, um, in and end, in the end, we'll function better. That's one the, treasurer, one town clerk. Not yeah, one treasurer, one, one town clerk. Yeah, board. One board, take my. We might have two out. boards because you still need somebody to 
manage the utilities. Yeah. I think the select board wants to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> if it's going to be all that, why wouldn't it be one tax? If you're going to merge all this and the village residents don't have any representative from one part of their town, why would there still be a village tax? Right. It that's be, that's it, what we've been talking about. We're saying it wouldn't be a village tax. Uh, sure. State statute allows correct. So essentially correct. a specialized. What you're doing is you're just tax. saying you're going to charge us in a different language yeah. instead of paying a village right. tax, having a government to represent yeah. what I've paid 33 years. I'm sorry, I missed that a little bit, Ken. What? I said, so basically that act you're talking about is just rewording it so you can charge the village residents in a different language to make up the tax. Um, right? I mean, you say well, you, and I assume you're referring to me, but- uh, Well, no, I'm just, what you just said, I'm sorry. That, I didn't want to say that you. is an option that Kent Gardner, who did the merger report said could happen said in his email which i forwarded to bj and steve on the 2nd of february i believe or it's the 22nd of february that that was an option where village taxpayers would not gain or lose and town taxpayers would not gain or lose he didn't say you have to he said it was an option and the original work that we did on money was about the savings to village it wasn't about taxing based on that suggestion. He was just saying that it's something that could be considered. Go ahead. I'm arguing against myself because my tax bill would go down by 11% because I'm a village resident. But then your town bill would go up. Yeah, I, correct. I know. But, um, Even nothing. So am I wrong? Am I wrong in thinking that maybe the solution to this is to have the village we're not going to try and decide whether to merge or not merge tonight, right? No. No. Shouldn't shouldn't we be talking about whether the village is prepared to restart the talks on? Well, I think it's more than the village. There's two of us here. Well, <laughs> well, the, the town and village uh, to restart the talks on. I on the merger. I think discussion. if each board could appoint two people. That would be great. And I fully support Duncan and Mark being the two people from the <laughs> You do too? Yeah. I'm down, I'm that's, down, that's three. I'm town service officer already. Uh, that was. <laughs> it's certainly interesting. And I would I'd be glad to work at it. I would I would respectfully submit that since I was the town. Uh, municipal administrator for 15 years that there might be some that would think I was highly qualified to do that and it might equally be people that think that I should not be involved in that discussion. I would counter that by saying you were also the village. That's why I said municipal. <laughs> this is because the item you're bringing that out on. <laughs> so, this is the item you're bringing that out on. You can use it on almost every one. Yeah. But anyways, it seems to me that the select board is in favor of moving forward with discussion. Whether I think we, we are taxpayers for a public discussion. Yeah. There's nothing else. Yes. So I we're think, so we're in the select board. board. We can hash out the details of who who's our right or not. So I have a question. So <laughs> I this the person you're talking about, is that who did the study previously? Kent Gardner did the That's merger it. report. And he did no, he, he, no study. But well, who was it that came to have the meeting that yeah. came? Yeah. Was yeah. that him? Yeah. yeah. So he's intimately aware of the current town of Johnson, village of Johnson's. Uh, have you scenario. spoken to Have you had discussions with him recently? Um, Last year. February. <laughs> February, yeah. So can quite a while ago that he mm -hmm. did that whole thing. He okay. will not provide a quote. Can he provide another name of somebody that we can use? For he will provide a quote. I had sent you an email and Steve asking if the village would be willing to be 50-50 partners in the cost of a merger study because Ken could he wanted the village stated of, if the village is willing to be full partners in funding and supervising the creation of a plan, let me know and I'll develop a proposal that prices the creation of the plan, sets boundaries for 
revision of that plan and sets out G or CR, GR's uh, involvement in the required public hearing. So what is the difference between what he did previously and what he's going to do now? He would actually be forming a merger plan. Um, the report before was just trying to find inefficiencies and costs and, and advantages for it, but it, it didn't lay out brickwork. But we don't really want him to do a plan because we haven't gone that far. We, we're looking for somebody to kind of dive in deep and give us the pros and cons to everything, right? That's sort of what he did. That report was done. I didn't think that was very thorough. It, it was. I thought your little thing sure here, I understand more with your little thing here than I understood with that report. Exactly. Um, okay, so I think the question is do we want to commit people? And, I, and the board is saying we do want to commit people. Is the village interested in doing this again? How about it, guys? I think we have yes. I, yep. I see Diane and Linda raising their hands. No. For what? Uh, to be represented. <laughs> oh, no. How, How about, about it, Captain? Do you want to pursue the talks? They can pursue the talks. Who is they? Not Ken. <laughs> 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 that, that Clear. Yeah, are, they the, are they asking to do the talks or somebody to put a plan together? Yeah, no, to to, to, to get somebody plans. to put to put a, a plan together. To just kind of, or one second. Go ahead. Mark, raise your hand. <laughs> there I, go. Well, I was just gonna say you want all of us question. The voters directed two prior boards to have hire a consultant to come in and provide that report, which we did, and we took it back to the voters. And the voters in both entities overwhelmingly directed these two boards now to continue these discussions of emerging. So I, I don't see how we can not- no, I, mean, right. say, I agree with discussing it further. I definitely agree with that. I just don't want to jump the gun either because no one said, okay, we definitely want to merger go forward with the merger they said they to continue the talk by what i took they continue the talks of the merger to see if it's beneficial for both entities to combine one by for clarity the first article that the voters voted on was to have the report generated and that happened the second article were for the two boards to continue discussions on merger what the merger would be there's been no other vote on anything else yeah, around yeah. the merger okay. Um, and honestly, I don't think there can be a, a, a further motion to merge or not merge. The, the statute is pretty clear. There has to be a detailed plan, and I think that's what Ken is, Kent is alluding to, is developing the merger plan. So in order to the in order for the town and village to have votes on whether or not to merge there would actually have to be a detailed plan that would spell it out spell right. out how you would physically merge the two entities what it would look like what it would yes. what it would look like i mean right. it is it's a detail i mean the plan that you would have to bring to the voters for approval to merge would be very specific I mean, it would, it would spell out would, in detail how it would be. Yeah. So, it, I think that's what Kent was suggesting he could prepare. Wouldn't it require a vote to spend the money to do this merger discussion that you were just talking about with Kent? They didn't, they didn't give us permission to spend money on this. They gave us permission to continue talks. So I think we should ask the public if we're going to spend $100,000 to have another study done or something. Um, yep, Ken, I, I agree that uh, town voters and village voters would have to vote on that. The sticking point right now is that we cannot get a quote. We don't even know how much to ask the voters for. Again, I'm going to go back to it unless the village has full buy-in of supporting the plan essentially I can, from this person from this person anyway from this person yeah 
Have we looked into anybody else besides him? I think he would be a good one. Uh, else is so I know Evan, it's, hard to, it's hard to say yes, we'll do it. And we'll give money when it could be 100000 there could be 300000 uh, You know, like, give us a little crumble of what's the estimate? Like, are you are you just said, looking for uh, us to... Wasn't it 30000 on that on the report study? But this one will be more in depth, right? Like, okay, hold on. Wait, Ken, what were you going to say? Did, is this? <laughs> I don't know. I lost my train of thought now. Um, That's okay. Maybe, well, take a second. Brian, what were you going to say? I, I just want to, again, hopefully help Evan a, a little bit and, and clear up what the question is not do you support this plan we haven't seen or read yet? Or are you willing to? commit money to it. Kent needs, what, what he needs from the village is, We're willing to participate. yeah, you're gonna be a participant. Yeah, of course he, he's gonna provide you with an estimate. If you're willing to be a participant in the future, he will provide you with an estimate that you can then decide yeah, right. if, if you wanna take it or not. Yeah, that's what I'm I was fine asking. That. I'm fine with that. That's what I was asking, so that, all he wants to know is, is that if this, if he comes, he's giving us a quote, and then if we're going to proceed with him, then we're going to be 50% partners, correct? He wants to make sure that the village is willing to have, is willing to participate in the discussions in order to get information to provide a quote for an assessment. So, like, he just wants to make sure, because I think he ran into some road, roadblocks last time, which is where his hesitance is. So he can't tell us what the amount of money that we need to spend to get a quote? Not without asking some questions about it. And I think he just wants to make sure that the village is willing to answer those questions for him so that he's giving an informed quote. And our voters already basically said we are. So we right. are. Yeah. So I think that it sounds to me like the, the thing that could move this forward is Steve responding to the email that Evan's referring to and say that the village is a willing participant in these discussions um, so that we can get to a point where we can um, get a quote for a full assessment. And it can be as simple as that. Separately from that, I think that we also can take the work that's done and go a few steps further in identifying like bigger areas that we would want to consider to inform whoever we hire or whoever we ask a quote for to help inform an RFP essentially um, so that we can get those quotes to bring to the, village, to the voters eventually. So I think that if we identify a couple of people from each of our boards, that those folks would be at task with what needs to be considered um, to help inform the RFP so that we can get quotes. Right. So basically, we're going to pull together. Uh, I don't know what, what's the word I'm looking for. We're going to put. We're going to. We're going to work together so that we have an outline of what we're going to present to Ken or somebody, so that they can get back to us with an estimate. Which we can then take to the voters. Yes. Okay, I like so, our assets and all that stuff. Well, and how it would actually uh, some if we work together, we can we can maybe say we need we need village electric, village water. They need to be run by a commission. They're not going to be run by the new entity. You know, to get some kind of an outline mm -hmm. around around what we want, so that we can go to Ken or what and say. What will it cost to make, to have a detailed plan so that we can one educate the voters of what this would look like? Because we don't, I personally don't know what it's going to look like at the moment. But at some point, we are going to have to talk to the village voters and the town voters and say this is what it would look like. And one of the pages would be this here, mm -hmm. the numbers, mm -hmm. and some of the pages would be. This is how it will. This is how it will work. Or how it could, because I think, I think more importantly than the solution to the problem, what is the problem? 
So identifying what all of those areas are that would need a solution mm -hmm. so that village treasure, different... like the contract, for example, that we have with the uh, union with our, our linemen. Mm -hmm. if, if we can change that, great. If we can't, we need we need to let people know that that's a potential huge cost of a merger. Yeah, there's lots of things. Right, because yeah. that, that clause in there, I assume you're going to work that out. One time. They can't talk about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can give your opinion. Yes. Uh, okay. So, yeah. are we good? Okay. I'm good. Are you willing? Yes. 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 Like yes. yes. What about so. Ken? Yeah, Ken, you're willing, right? He's willing to talk. If you mute him. No, Ken, <laughs> earlier Ken said that he's willing to continue discussion with lunch. It's not him. <laughs> well, you didn't actually say that. Not Ken. <laughs> Fair uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we are at the end of our regular agenda. Next item is uh, a follow up joint meeting. We have some health care and other related items we know we'll need to follow up on. We also have um, follow up on the website. Well, but a bunch of the things we talked about tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so, just looking It'll at be healthcare and inflation adjustments. Yeah, well, we put that agenda together. Yeah. If anyone has ideas for agenda items, go to your chairs or to your uh, Brian and Eric people. To um, but so the next November, looking at yes. November, the first select. Board meeting is the seventh. The first village trustee meeting is the 14th. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we should each have a respective meeting and then get together. Um, so maybe looking at this Wednesday the 16th. Mm -hmm. You think you'll have the numbers by then, Rose Mary? You're going to be gone a lot, so. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Yeah. Forget, forget yeah, we'll cross <laughs> numbers. <laughs> when are you getting back? Have you sent those? Oh, we're do the but then I thought you were going again. Are you going to send those? No, once things, once I'm back on the 20, I'll, yeah. be, I'll probably be here on the 21st. I probably will get back. Oh, the 23rd? What about the 20, when is there the 23rd? The day before Thanksgiving. Day before oh, that's Thanksgiving. Yeah. You're going to be cooking. Um, what about the 24th? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not just jump sure. over right in all high and have turkey together? Let's not. Uh, I wouldn't count on it if Mark promised it. <laughs> we can just have dinner. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm bringing pizza. I saw Evan the pizza has the last day. He asked if I was going to eat pizza, and I said, no, that's your job. And then he said, Mark doesn't ever eat. Hey, Beth. Yeah. What about the 30th? It's a Wednesday. It's after Thanksgiving, and all of our crew can be here. It's 30th, 30th. a little late. <laughs> People need to make their choices before December 15th. Right. Yeah. And so we make decisions and then they need to select their plans. But is two weeks fair for the employees? I right? well, why did not a lot of time to do this. No. Why did we nix the 16th? Because not all of our not all of our board can be there. Do you have a quorum? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I yeah. think Ken can well uh, can we make it? I can. I can. I can. I might be able to see. Well, I don't okay. even know when Ken, can you make the 16th? As long as it's not during hunting hours. <laughs> I think it's just, be, well, it is hunting to your point earlier, <laughs> but I don't think long it's rifle quite that. As long as it's at six o'clock or later. Well, uh, rifle uh, season uh, starts the second Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's going to be It is rifle season. It'll be a hunting season. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll you can't out. zoom. And I'll watch it. Ninth? If, if we want to go early ninth, no, but we need after to do it before our tr uh, after our trustee meetings. meeting, which is the fourteenth. I think we should That's try and push for the sixteenth. Yeah. There's two of us, but that would make sense. Yeah, be a fast meeting. <laughs> like if we can do the thirtieth, <laughs> good tonight. Okay, the thirtieth is too late for benefits for our employees. I mean, because we have three hours. Employees enough time to talk. We did that last year. Right? Okay. We've done later, but it okay, really. Yeah, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Maybe. Stop, 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 stop. Every one of you. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you One person at a time. 18th. This 18th. 
Jesus, 18th work for you. It's a Friday. That's a Friday. Work for you. I won't be here. You? Good. Okay, 18th works. It's a Friday for me. I believe that works for me. Sure. Eric? I could be there the 18th. <laughs> 18th, Duncan? You got nothing on the calendar at the moment. And my rifle with me. But and then I'll be divorced. <laughs> you can't cut in the dark, Eric. That's right. It's dark out of So they four say. Four. Okay, hold up. Uh, Ken, is the 18th okay with you? What day is it? It's a Friday. I'm at Deer Camp. Do you have a quorum? Yep. You still have a quorum? Okay. Uh, okay. We have a quorum. Even if you can't make the error, we have a quorum. You can't mess up. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, you'll it's never get reelected, like Eric. It's gonna finish <laughs> So okay, let's plan for the 18th. Let's do it. Yeah. What time? What? Uh does it six o'clock work for everybody? Six or something. Six. Got it. Just came right in the account. Rosemary, you give them that. I'm not gonna hear that that's the line. I'm not gonna hear that from you though. You're the most important person. <laughs> about us talking about benefits? You going to your camp, too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your camp, too. You going to your camp, too. Do you have any concerns about, what, about us talking to? Well, we'll have board meetings before that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Brian, you can make the 18th? I can make the 18th. Okay. Um, and hopefully, uh, with a K account. We already know Eric for the C. <laughs> Iffy. You'll have your okay, you'll have your deer by then. Six. Six. Are we ready to adjourn? Okay, I move we adjourn. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, we're adjourned. We're adjourned.